right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another uh, brush hour, um, which uh, lasts longer than an hour. So, you know, we kind of dilate time and, and make it, you know, make an hour seem like 90 minutes or so. Um, uh, but tonight, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be painting some animals. Um, you know, ad adventures don't always take place in dungeons. Uh, sometimes they take place in forests. And so we're going to be painting some fur. Um, I've got a couple of wild boars um, and a grizzly bear. Um, these miniatures are all from... Uh, whiz kids uh these are just like with the minis that i painted last week if you were here these are from their nolzers uh deep cuts uh line um which is really i guess just their line for things that are kind of generic um good in any dungeon and or, or any sort of adventure uh so we're going to be painting some fur um the boars there's going to be my my thought with them is they're going to kind of start with slightly different um Fur colors is the base coat, uh, and I'm not a hundred percent sure what I'm going to do with the grizzly, but it'll it'll probably, as you can kind of see here, be some sort of uh, brown for all of them. Um, I've got, and then let's talk about our paints for tonight. Um, so for kind of the bases of the fur, uh, I think we're going to start um, and uh, with the Monument Hobbies Pro Krill Dark Umber and Light Umber, I think that's going to be uh, the bases for the two uh, the two boars. Um, might combine them and do them uh, kind of, I guess, just a regular umber, if you will, uh, for the grizzly bear. Um, and then we will uh, kind of work the black brown and the warm brown, maybe some throw in some muddy brown. Um, to kind of help build like the shadows of it, um, of the fur and um, work our way up to like maybe a lighter color, uh, like maybe the warm brown mixed with either some burnt orange to give it a little bit of depth, uh, which is over here at the end. Um, kind of wash it with uh, a soft tone to give it a little bit of extra depth. And then I'm thinking for like the boars, do a dry brush of the burnt orange. And um, I don't know, we'll see how that we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think eventually, once I'm done with like a bunch of animal models, uh, I might have a few more lying around. Uh, I think we'll spend an evening doing basing um, to kind of uh, create, um, you know, to put these miniatures onto something. Uh, give them sort of like a realistic ground texture. Uh, this is a horse that I had quickly painted months ago, um, but I uh, I based it last week and I finished it earlier today. Um, so welcome, everyone. Uh, we're going to be uh, going to the zoo, I guess. So um, I'm going to just start, move my paints out of the way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just start with some basic kind of color mixing. Uh, so I'm going to start with the dark umber and the light umber, because uh, again, these are going to be my base for um, the boars. Ignore the magenta and the, the yellow that's over here. Uh, I was painting hazard stripes earlier, and magenta makes a really good undercoat for yellow. Uh, all right, so go ahead and do our dark umber over here. And our light umber just over here. Again, we're going to keep them close by so I can mix them. Um, one of the things that I don't think like hobby painters talk about enough as well. So like, one of the things that you'll hear like miniatures painters talk about is thinning your paints, um, which is something you should do. Um, but one of the things that they don't also really talk about is like color adjustment. So in terms of like saturation. So one of the things that like acrylic painters tend to do is they will like adjust the um, the saturation of their paints with like black and white, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Um, so I may mix in a little bit of these colors if it's not quite where I want it to. 
Um, you can obviously always just adjust saturation with like darker umbers or or browns, you know, whatever kind of colors you're going with. Um, so let me go ahead, get some water on my brush. This is a bigger brush, um, probably like a I don't know, number four or a number eight if you're going to use like an artist brush. But this is branded. It's just an army painter uh, monster brush. Um, army painter, if you've kind of been here before. Um, I, I like their paint, their brushes a lot. Um, they work really well at a, like a pretty decent price point, um, for the type of paint that, or for like the type of painting that I'm going to be doing. And they, uh, nicely enough, they brand everything sort of like by line. So you can kind of get an idea of like what you're sort of kind of expected to do so you can see here i've got two of their brushes one is from their hobby line and the other is from wargamer the brushes are generally identical um in terms of like the hobby line versus wargamer uh but so a standard brush would be doing most of the things that i would do with painting whereas the monster brush bigger brush holds more paint is for like bigger models so i've got my browns kind of mixed the way that i want um and i'm just going to start with the grizzly just because since I did the mixing, that kind of paint is already on the brush and kind of bring him more into focus. And we'll just kind of start putting that paint on. Um, I'm going to try to kind of move it around because one of the things that I do want to be able to do with this is I don't want it to be too thick. Um, I want some of the black undercoat from the primer to still sort of show through. That gives me an idea of kind of like where I can build shadows you know, that kind of, um, you know, where some of my high points are and use that to sort of help build the foundation. So now that that's kind of out of the way, how's everyone doing tonight? Pretty good. A couple days before Thanksgiving for those of us in the States. Glad to be here. Nice to see you, Nix. Saw Dice Station Zebra earlier. And since this is like a base coat, I'm I'm okay being a little sloppy with it. Um, it is also a bear, so some differences in color gradients not going to be too bad. If my brown gets a little unmixed or um, or if I have to remix the color and it's slightly off. Go back to the head. Get some more of this on his big bear belly. Underside. Get his little armpit. Yeah, animals are animals are really nice just because like they're so I mean, coats can have variation. Um, they don't have to look perfect. It's real easy to make them look good. So when you get it's when you get animals with like real distinct patterns that it gets crazy. Like yeah, almost any type of bird. Tigers, leopards, uh, those kinds of creatures. Most fish. Oops, that's a little bit too much paint there. It's all right. We'll spread it out and get the rest of that. Oops, a little bit too much of the dark umber in there, but that's okay. Uh, not much left. Just kind of his legs down there and then bare butt and bring since I got a lot of paint on the brush just kind of bring that up the back come back around the front think might do 
since this already looks pretty much like that light umber, I might do a little bit of the light umber with some of that burnt orange for one of the boars. That's already kind of, oops, that's a little bit too much water on my brush. Way too much. And a good thing about all of these animals is that, you know, I just kind of can make them as cool or as varied or as similar as you want. Oh, that is way too much water on my palette. All right. We might have to come back to the bear. Let his arm dry a little bit before I try to paint the inside of it. Looking a little thin there. That's all right. So I'm getting the that burnt orange. Um, and I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to put some down over here. Let's go ahead and take my brush. Get some of the light umber. Kind of mix it in here and see what we get. It needs a little bit more burnt, burnt orange. It looks pretty red, um, all things considered on camera. Let's see. How is that? Yeah, you can kind of see. So you can see that the, the color is muted a little bit more down here. Um, and that's the that's the light umber coming in and uh, taking care of that. Whereas the burnt orange is still pretty kind of bright and orangey. So go ahead, we'll take, do this on one of our boars. And we'll just kind of paint it in. I'm not worried too much about their eyes. Um, we're going to always deal with their mouths later. Now, last week when we were painting, we were trying out, um, kind of showing off the slap chop method. It was like so a lot of uh, mini painters call it which is using speed paints and um, a lot of heavy dry brushing or uh, zenithal highlighting if you have like an airbrush or primer cans um, to achieve like a quick painted effect. Um, this is going to be a little bit more of your like traditional um, painting. We'll do uh, basically think of it as like three steps. Base coat, which is what we're doing now. Um, a shade, um, uh, and then like layering and highlighting, even though that's four steps and I said three. So, go ahead and just make sure that we get every little nook and cranny, oops, with some of that burnt orange. We may need a second coat of this. Um, not really going to know the kind of how good the coverage is until it dries. Um, you kind of could see it starting with the the bear. Um, a lot of those pieces gets really muted after it dries, uh, and that's okay. Um, I think that's. I mean, that'll happen normally, but I think that's also really something that is. Um, specific to the pro acryl paints that I use is they get a real like matte almost chalky finish sometimes All right. yeah this is probably need another pass with that base coat um, but I'm going to let him sit for the time being
Then this one is just going to be dark amber or dark umber. Um, so he's going to just basically be like just nice dark brown. If you paint enough of these guys, you can send 30 or 40 feral boars at your players. End the encounter real quick because there's a lot of them. Pesky adventurers never, never uh, expecting a boar to do damage. <laughs> yes, this is the deep cuts line. And also that joke that I made was really bad. So the brown's not turning up too well on the camera. Uh, that's probably my camera's white balance being off. The last time when I tried to mess with the the camera midstream, it didn't end well. And uh, as a person who's had to white balance many a cameras, please don't do it while we're on stream. <laughs> <laughs> it is an annoying and sometimes arduous uh process to go through white balancing and sometimes the camera just doesn't like it yeah you'd think we did we like resolved this problem by now with cameras yeah there is such a thing as auto white balancing and it's sometimes but <laughs> <laughs> i would i would venture farther than sometimes but <laughs> i've never had auto white balancing I... work well I have and had I to forcibly use it on some of my stuff because every time I've tried to white balance, it doesn't take. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I mean, to be fair, they're not, like, the most expensive cameras, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, this is like a document camera that I got off of Amazon. Yeah. Uh, works great. I mean, you know, a little zoom compression, but gets the point across. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so we've got... Uh, the center bore's drying a little bit, but we've got our three uh, three animals. Um, base coated real, really. Um, Grizzly, actually, that coverage came out a little bit better than I was expecting when that paint was still wet on the arm. Uh, I am going to do a second coat of the burnt orange light umber mix. Um, that's just a little bit too thin i want him to be kind of almost pumbaa-esque in um in his orangeiness so i'm just gonna i'm gonna do this with uh the standard brush and just kind of sort of just splotch it in very technical term Yeah, she is. Um, she won't know that, though, until probably tomorrow when I take pictures of this guy. When he was a young warthog. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of the oranginess that I wanted with this. All right, keep going. So while I'm just kind of painting this boar, <laughs> it's a musical. Well, it's musical. It's going to be a musical in like five second chunks because anything more and we get the Twitch channel in trouble. You found us a room and liked a certain appeal. You can clear the savannah <laughs> after every meal. I'm a sensitive soul. Though I seemed thick skinned. I hate how much I know this song. <laughs> I, I heard this song so much growing up. I may or may not have watched it on repeat with uh, my middle school best friend to the point where we would act out scenes together even when we weren't watching the movie. <laughs> I My parents are saints. <laughs> The amount of patience they held. 
think the only movie that I could do large chunks of stuff like that from would be Super Troopers. And that's because <laughs> when I I was six, 16, 17, 17, um, I worked at a camp um, and uh, you're in the woods for an entire summer without much in the way to entertain you. Um, so it's, you know, whatever whoever had like a cheap portable DVD player and whatever DVDs they had. Um, and one of the guys had super troopers and we watched that movie probably 70 or 80 times. Because once you're done in the, like with your camp program in the evening, you've got nothing else to do, but sit in your cabin. So I had friends in high school who um, were like, no, you are not allowed to uh, see that movie anymore. You're not allowed to quote it. Um, <laughs> all right, that's fair. All right. So let's move back to our Grizzly. Uh, I think the movies that I could quote, so it was Lion King for sure um, and Pebble and the Penguin. I don't think I've ever heard of I don't I've never heard of that one, let it's alone a seen Dawn, it. It's a Don Bluth animated film from 1995. Oh. And uh it is I watched it and rented it so much from the VHS rental store. Like it was just a little family owned one next to Food Lion. And I watch I would get that every time we went to the point where my brother would run ahead of me. To the store to hide it because he was <laughs> sick of it <laughs> he That's... was so mad when my parents found it on dvd and gifted that to me like when i was in high school oh man <laughs> because of course i popped it in the dvd player immediately <laughs> <laughs> it's got tim curry as the villain okay all right so that's that's already like you know it's a good it's a good step there oh yeah it's great and uh it's like it's one of those things that sometimes when uh i'm having a bad day i'll just start singing um there's this one song where the main character hubie um goes <laughs> gets like scooped up and thrown on a boat uh like a steam liner to I don't know, going to a zoo or something, and he's trying to escape. But when he wakes up on this on this boat, um, the other animals that are on there, like other penguins and and birds and stuff from the the frozen tundra, basically, uh, start singing like about the boat that they're on, because I guess they've been there for months or something. <laughs> <laughs> but they start singing, uh, "Welcome aboard the good ship, misery." <laughs> Dinner in a rusty cup. <laughs> Everyone gets good and miserable. And then we all throw up. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes when I'm in a bad mood, I start singing that song and it just is instantly. It's ridiculous, but it's it it works. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> I'm gonna have to look that. I'm gonna have to look that song up. Oh, it's not. It's not good. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna be the first to tell you it is no masterpiece of animation. But oh no, uh, that's that's fair. It's 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 fun. <laughs> so I'm just washing the bear. Um, mostly to kind of get some shadow going. Um. The real like the real cool thing about like fur is um it doesn't take it doesn't take a lot to like make it look good. Um so you can obviously do like layers upon layers of uh gradients and highlighting and layering, um but a base coat, a wash, and a dry brush and it'll be fine. Uh, yeah, Pony King, the uh, the wash does dry matte. Um, so to just kind of show you comparison, uh, this horse here um, was... Um, this horse was basically painted brown and then washed um, with uh, the same uh, wash tone that I used. And it's 
kind of, you know, it's wet and glossy now in the bare, but it will dry, it'll dry matte. Um, there are some paints. Um, I'm going to just kind of pull it out as an example. Um, so there are some paints that companies make, uh, whether it is like um, just a couple of examples here, as I have a bunch of them now. Um, so these paints, these effect paints or technical paints, these are uh, designed to dry glossy. Um, so you, you'll you put them onto the model. Uh, you can thin them down with water or um, uh, like a, an acrylic flow improver or acrylic medium. And um, you can use them basically as a wash, but they'll still kind of end up glossy. Uh, washes are designed to uh, just dry matte. So... Um, you can already kind of see like his paw is um, is drying and it's kind of matte already uh, while the rest of him is still pretty wet. So that's basically what I'm going to be doing for like all three of these. We'll uh, we'll mostly see how it works with the uh, the bores. Now, in terms of like the fur texture, the bores have a lot more like definition than the grizzly does um and so there's gonna be a lot more that we can do sort of texturally with the bores um to kind of make them pop a little bit more uh one of the things that you probably won't see me do tonight is i probably will not be painting their eyes um for a couple of reasons the first is one eyes always suck to paint um and two, um, our goal here, again, is generally just to get something that looks really good on the table. And if your players are getting real close to inspect the boar's eyes, they're uh, playing the wrong game. All right. So the, the, the wash that I used was the Army Painter Soft Tone, um, which works really well on those browns. I don't really know how it's going to work with the orange here. So this might be a case of we wash it, we determine if we like it or not, and then if we don't, we just repaint uh, that burnt orange. I'm kind of scraping the bottle of bottom of my little wash cup that I use. So I'll, I may have to add some more in as well to that, but we're just going to throw it on here and see, see how it comes out. I haven't done anything. Um, so one, th or one thing about like these models is uh, the WizKids models, because they're designed to be really easy to use, um, the models themselves usually come with like a little bit of base or terrain. Um, so you can see on the the bore here, it's they're like standing on like rocks or mud or dirt, and uh, that will even like move to. Let's see, let me grab one of them. Uh. Or you will you work? Yeah. So even like um even like this nightmare is um it, it has that like bit of terrain there so that you can just glue that to a base. Um otherwise you'd have to glue each of the like hooves in this case or the, the hooves on the, the um or the paws on the bear you have to glue them to the base um which can be tricky if you're not used to like painting minis or, or wargaming minis which you usually have to do that with uh D, D minis on the other hand we just glue them to the base right now all of my minis are currently tacked to their base with a little bit of like blue tack um that way i can pull them off and if i mess up the base while i'm painting them i can just paint it black or paint it brown and then go in with my basing stuff
you're getting the paint station together slowly but surely. Uh, don't have a lot of colors yet. Okay, that's fine. You don't need a lot of colors to start. Um, I generally, like, there's some really good, like, paint, like, starting paint kits um, that are reasonably priced and they'll get you going. Um, and you can start there. They usually have some good colors. Uh, as well as if you, like, remember back to elementary school art class, um, kind of remembering the color wheel, you can always mix colors. So, you know, we did that a little bit here, and it's like, I don't need these colors anymore. But, you know, if I wanted to make something sort of like a pinkish orange, I can just mix the two together, adding more yellow or more magenta until I get kind of the color that I want. And eventually, as I get more and more yellow in there, I wind up with kind of an orangey color. So don't forget your kind of art basics, you know. Um, color mixing will really help you spread the amount of colors that you have. Um, or you can develop a problem like me where I have like five different shades of gray. <laughs> um, because I, you know, maybe I need a bright neutral gray and a dark neutral gray and a cloudy gray or a Payne's gray. So. Well, unfortunately, we are <laughs> never too many grays. Um, unfortunately, we are at a bit of a, not a break point. Um, but I can't really do anything on model at the moment, uh, just because the washes aren't dry. Um, so we can actually kind of sit here and sort of discuss um, what we want to do color-wise with this. Um and we can actually, I'm going to bring in my demo dryad, I guess, is the best way to describe her. Um, <laughs> she's, I just test colors out on her because she's got a lot of textures. Um, I'm almost never going to use her because those ankles are weak. I guess they're kind of strong because she bends, but she don't break. Um, so I guess we can think about like, what we want to do with the uh the tops um kind of the edges of the uh the bear's fur so my thought process um is i've darkened the bear a lot started with kind of a mixture of the two different umbers um and i've got something that looks pretty good um, I could probably put this on the table and it would be great for like one one fight. Um, but if I'm playing um, like if I'm playing a game that has a, a druid that can like turn into animals or if I've got a spell that allows me to do that, um, maybe I'm you know I'm gonna use this a lot. so I want to think of a little bit more about like how that's going to happen. Um, so I've got more browns over here. Um, I can. I've got a, I've got a, uh, this warm brown. Um, this is from the, again, this is Pro Acryl. Uh, it's their signature series, which really just means this came, uh, this was inspired by like a, a YouTuber or a, a mini painter um, with a little bit of notoriety. Uh, this, I guess, is Ninjon, who I don't know who that is, but it's a really nice brown. It's got a little warmth to it, like its name would suggest. Um, or I've got this muddy brown from Reaper. Um, so I think I might just kind of put these onto my palette, see what they look like, give them a good shake. I shook everything up before this, the stream started, but it doesn't hurt to shake them just before I go to use them. So got that warm brown and we've got muddy brown. All right. So kind of right off the bat they're similar enough kind of close Let's see if we can get them without kind of reflecting so much of my light um a wet palette is a very good investment um the they you can buy like really big ones you can also make your own um you, like, 
I'll come back to these browns. I'm still figuring out which ones I want. But a, a wet palette. Um, Army Painter makes this one. Uh, I think they also have an XL that's bigger. Um, their wet palette kit comes with... Um, actually, so I have the contents of the kit in my little drawer. Um, so it comes with um, essentially parchment paper. And that parchment paper is what you put on top of the sponge. And then it comes with a couple of sponges. Um, sorry for blowing out the, the light on the stream. Uh, they are white, unfortunately. Um, the Army Painter one also is really cool because it comes with a... Um, it's a couple pieces. So you've got the base of the palette that you put the sponge in. You get that wet. You put the parchment paper on top. And then it has a cover for it that is essentially a brush holder because you can just go ahead and put your brushes in there. Uh, they will move around a bit. So if you've got brushes that still have like the little um, like plastic caps to them when you buy them, you can put them back on and, and help you know keep your brushes from getting damaged. And then there's a lid for everything. And then on top of the lid, or in addition to the lid, is a, a band. That keeps everything like nice and closed. Um, it's a really good starter kit. A uh, friend gifted me mine, uh, but I've used um, Privateer Presses um, wet palette kit. There's uh, some really expensive ones that are like quote unquote artist grade. Uh, but realistically, since it's just like parchment paper and a sponge, um, you can create your own. You just need a flat dish or something that can hold it. Um, it can be a like a piece of plastic. Um, I've seen people basically use like the the plastic clamshells from uh, their miniatures, where they'll just kind of cut off the excess parts, cut a bit of sponge to go in the bottom of it, and then you wet that up and put the parchment paper on it. Um, it's not necessary. Oops. It's not necessary, but it is really nice. Um, so back to our browns. Um, the warm brown, I think I might use, but I think I might might try to use them both. Yeah, that Army Painter one's not too pricey. Um, so, But I think what I'm going to do is I think I might do some dry brushing. So... We did some dry brushing last week, I think. Um, get a little piece of paper out here. So I'm going to kind of prep my dry brush. Uh, so the dry brushing is just a technique of taking a tiny, tiny bit of paint um, onto your brush and just kind of gently, like, just softly kissing the edge of the model. Um, I'm going to move this paper towel out of the way so you can actually kind of see the mini as I'm doing this. But I need the paper towel to start off with. So I'm going to get some paint onto my brush. Uh, it's not a whole lot. I did not load the the brush up with a lot. And I said I was going to use the second and I'm here using it first. And then I'm just going to take and brush it along until right about there where I have very little paint on the brush. It's still enough. You can kind of tell it's still, there's still color on the brush and I'm just going to move it in one direction. Uh, in this case, I'm moving it up the backside of the bear. Uh, I'm trying to catch the, um, I'm trying to catch the edges and just not put paint in the shadows, but just put a little bit of warm brown on the top of the, the bear being real soft with it. Oh, and I said I was going to move that. And I didn't. So, let me just kind of see. I'm just kind of keep moving forward. I'm going to actually go back and do this with the color that I wanted first. So, I'm going to get paint on my brush. Bring this 
off camera so that I can do this right. There we go. And then just, just looking for like a little bit, just to kind of catch the highlights, catch the edges. And there's still a bunch of wet paint on that side. So he's going to look a little weird over there. And then you can kind of be a little bit more forceful in some areas where maybe you want more of that paint to catch. Um, and again, we're just kind of looking for just a little effect, just a little bit of extra judge to, to the model. And all right, so we'll kind of show you on our little test model kind of what I'm doing where you can sort of see it a lot easier because she's just sort of primer white. If I do it on the front side, you can really kind of see it. So I'm really just trying to hit the, like top. Yeah, you you have. I, I added that word to my vocabulary and for better or worse. But so you see how like as I as I'm just dry brushing, I'm just catching kind of the bottom edge of of her like front um like the front of the model. Um let's see if this will yeah, so you can kind of see that. And that's basically what I'm trying to do with the fur. So I want to make sure that I'm catching the fur, the, the tips of it. Um, when you're dry brushing, you you can go crazy and you can go in every direction. Um, but you really just sort of want to go in a singular direction so it looks a lot more uniform. Let's see. How are our boars over here? Now, what I think I might do with the, the darker boar is I think I might do... Um, something a little bit more it's just there we go um, is I think I might go for like a gray eventually but I still want to warm him up just a little bit so we're going to go with that second brown that warm brown And then we're just going to, this one I'm going to have to do in some stages because there are still some parts that I see that are wet on him. So we're just going to just try to get just the, just the edges. That's a little bit too much paint on that still. Yeah, he's got some wet paint. Hit his face. Yeah, you can really notice it on this one just because I'm going from a much darker brown to a much lighter brown. Um, what I'm probably going to do is I've got a small dry brush, if I can find it in my paint holder. So I've got a much smaller dry brush um, that I will probably use for like the final sort of dry brushing highlight um, so that I get a lot more control with where I want to go. Um, but for the time being, we're kind of just, we're really literally painting with a broad brush. All right. Uh, how are you? You're still a little, little wet too, but not as bad. Because you are going to be less friendly to mistakes. I'm going to come back to you. See how our bear is doing. So he's doing all right. You can really start to also see it on this bear now too. 
um, now that like more of him has dried and I'm not moving paint, but I'm just placing a little bit on him. So while I'm going to kind of pivot here because I've got some time uh, because that orange one is still um, still wet, I'm actually going to pivot to the inside of the bear's mouth. Um, so for this, I'm going to do it's a really, really easy trick. So um, flesh tones are or can be a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, so there are tons of different skin tone paints out there. Um, this is the Reaper tan skin. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to paint the inside of the bear's mouth with the tan skin. And then I'm going to put a wash onto the tongue to make the tongue pop out a little bit more. Um, so this is going to be difficult because it's a very tiny area. Uh, so get my oops. Reshake that up a little bit. I'm just going to get a little bit of the tan skin under my palette. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I appreciate the compliments. It is a, it is a, it is a fine bear so far. All right. Let's see if this will focus. Doesn't like it when I'm up close. So let's see if we can find a nice middle point. Right about there. A little bit. All right. So I'm just going to just paint inside of his mouth. Just getting a little bit of color. Um, I will also, it's going to be a pain, but I will go in and I will try to hit his teeth just a little bit. I'm just moving the model around so that I can see it. Uh, it's going, painters. Um, how's it going, Grape Ape? So we've got a mouth. It's been painted. Like I said, I'm going to come back and uh, wash the uh, the tongue, make it stand out a little bit more. Um, and I'm going to let that dry before I uh, move on with his teeth. All right. Are you still wet? You're still wet. How dare you? Oh, you're miscast too. That's why you're still wet. Okay. So don't mind me. Um, some of the wash has kind of settled into this uh, miscast lower jaw. So it's trying to get some of it off. Um. Yeah. So all of the all of the models that we get for uh, for role playing games are cast um, in a couple of ways. They're either uh, done in a mold, or they're almost always done in a mold because that's how we cast them. Um, but they're either like plastic injection molded. Um, so plastic injection molds are going to come out looking like this, um, and you can see they basically they come in and they put they inject plastic into the mold let them plastic cool, and then they pull out the model. Um, so plastic injection molding, you usually see it with uh, with models where you're going to assemble the pieces. So um, think, uh, think games like Warhammer, um, where you have like a lot of options. Or if you think like model cars, um, I think technically the... Um, the WizKids minis that I'm painting are also a type of like pla plastic injection molded, um, but they're they're not like a hard uh, plastic. They're more of a softer plastic. So any number of things can happen during the casting process. 
um, with things like um, metal and um, plastic, you can get like pieces where maybe the mold slipped, uh, maybe air got in, um, or or maybe the plastic or resin or metal didn't cure all the way. Um, with uh, plastic and metal, it not curing all the way is usually never going to happen um, because they um, they cure when they cool. So as they cool, they just reharden. Uh, with resin, because it's a chemical reaction, uh, it relies a lot, a lot on like temperature and pressure um, because you want to force air out and you want to force the resin to interact with the resin as much as possible, um, which is different than 3D printed resin, which is uh, it's still resin, still toxic. But instead of it uh, chemically reacting um, uh, by the, the two components mixing, it's uh, reacting to UV light. So this bore, let me pop him off of my model holder real quick. This bore's lower jaw has a big gap um, or a line here. I don't know how well that shows up on camera. You can kind of see. Um, so it's like right up. I mean, yeah, I guess the brush is the best that'll work. Um, so it's like right above the brush head here. Um, it won't matter in terms of like what we're doing, which is to put something visually interesting on uh, on the board. Uh, but if this was like, if I was going to enter this in for like a competition, um, I would run into problems because now I would have to like go back, fix the jaw um, with like modeling putty. And that would delay me because at this point I've already put like base coats down. I've put some paint on him. I'd have to strip the paint, which is a whole process in and of itself. All right. Um... So he's dry. Uh, I think I'm going to dry brush it with just a little pure uh, burnt orange. So we did that mix earlier. We washed it and then we are going to uh, just do burnt orange. So again, just kind of um, so the only way to, if you were buying it from a store, the only way to tell would be to visibly inspect the model before you buy it. Um, so, uh, thankfully with like most role-playing game minis that you would see in a store, um, they're going to come in a clamshell or uh, they're going to, there's going to be like plastic on them. So you generally can get a good idea of uh, what they've got. So uh, like here, I'll show you kind of a couple that I have. Um, so we'll use the, actually, let's not use that one. I have one that I didn't. There, okay. So, so these are two models that I, that I bought at stores. Um, I'll probably gonna paint uh, the guy on the left here in a couple of weeks. Maybe do some interesting stuff with metallics. But if I was buying it and picking it up, I would try to do kind of a visual inspection as best as I can. So I would be looking for, depending upon the the type of mini, um, uh, Reaper's Bones is a type of plastic injection molding. Um, but I would be looking for things that could cause, could have air bubbles in the mold. Um, so I'd look at like, um, like armpits, uh, the back of knees, uh, anywhere where a, a bubble could have formed. And then those would be pretty easy to see because the bubble like would visibly still be there. Um, it would just be like a chunk of the plastic is missing. Um, for like these guys, they're also like a similarly kind of plastic injection process. Um, it's a little bit harder to see them because there's more plastic between them and the mini. Um, but I'm basically just kind of looking for the same thing. Are there any sort of bubbles? Is there um, like actually there might be a miscast on this guy and the scarecrow. So let's open them up. So 
just to know what I'm painting next to him. Uh, oh, nope, I was wrong. So what I thought was a miscast was this, like, fold of the cloth. Uh, let's see if this will work. Focus, focus. Get all that other stuff out of the way. Um, so I thought that there was a piece of, uh, there was like a bubble here, but this kind of upon closer inspection is just um, a fold of the cloth. Uh, other sort of miscasts to look out for are um, the like where the mold has slipped. So this scarecrow has a line going down the arm across the shoulders uh, and down the other side. That is the mold line. So essentially that is where the two pieces of the mold came together. And there's a slight, you know, microns uh, wide little gap there. So if the mold slipped, then his like back half might be shifted to the left while his front half is shifted to the right. Um, so it's it's not it's generally not a big deal if you do get a miscast mini, um, because you can generally just contact uh, the company that you bought it from, um, and say, hey, I got a miscast. Um, you know, can I can you guys help me out? And most of the companies that make minis, um, like the big companies, they're generally pretty good about getting you replacements. Sorry to jump back to my minis, but I want to see how they're drying, what we're looking at. All right. Yeah. So we're kind of at a nice point here. We can kind of go a bunch of different ways with the different models. Um, so I think we're going to come back to our bear. And he's had a couple of dry brushes. Um, but I think I'm going to do... I think we're going to do just a, a little bit. See how this looks. Um... You know what? Let's. So I've got this tan skin down here. Uh, oh, of course, Grape Ape. Um, it is no problem explaining this stuff. Uh, there's my sculpting tool. Yeah, tweezers. Actually, I get the palette knife out. Don't worry. All right. So I'm going to take, since I'm done with the tan skin. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is take some of the paint that I have here. Uh, this is just a, a palette knife that I bought for like oil painting and stuff. And I'm just going to mix the paints together. So I'm getting something that's a little bit... Now, I did this earlier with the brush, but, it be... but earlier with the brush, the paints were near each other. Um, so I wanted to... I had to bring paint to the other side. But I think what I'm going to do is take my dry brush and take a different one. Um, again, makeup brushes make really good dry brushes. Uh, I'm going to load the ends up with paint. Maybe. And I'm going to brush off all but the tiniest amount. And I'm going to just sort of dry brush kind of like the highest edges and just sort of capture that top part you can kind of see it happening on the face there top of the arms and I'm doing this just to give him a little bit of variation in character um, I can do this also to kind of like just hit the hit the spots that would be hit by light from above. Um, I gotta get the oh, I didn't clean him properly. See a big old mold line down the center of his face. That's all right. He's still a good bear. So kind of looks like Alf from the eighties. But yeah, 
So it's really all needs done. I mean, he's he's got some fur variations now. He's got. Um, I'm gonna paint his teeth. I'm gonna wash the the tongue with some red wash. Um, actually, I'm curious. I can always go gray with this if I've still got. If it doesn't look good. Because I don't have as much paint on here anymore, um, I got I can go quite heavy on my brush strokes with the dry brush. So when you're dry brushing, like at first, while there's, while well, you're still kind of getting used to it, um, you want to like go very gentle until you get the right amount of paint on there, and then once you've kind of figured it out like what you're looking for, you can um, start to really kind of add pressure to make sure that you're clipping the parts that you want. So we darkened him up a lot with that first, that dark umber, and then the wash, um, and then the kind of the muddy brown first dry brush. And here we are with a kind of our Skin warm brown uh second dry brush. And again, fur is really fun because you can play with the texture of it a lot. Oh, this guy's got that same jaw issue. That must be an issue with the uh model process then and not my particular not one of them. But both of them. So kind of see if we can get him. So you can see we created just a nice bit of like contrast between the darker parts of his fur and the top. Um, now, one of the things that I, I'm going to do here with him specifically, let's say he's, you know, he's been around for a while. Um, and he maybe he's an older boar. And I'm just going to take a little bit of gray. Put that right onto my palette. Oop, too much gray, but that's okay. And I'm just going to take that same, just a little, same brush. <laughs> you missed, you missed um, when we were singing that earlier. You just can't not. I know, you know, right? It's it's <laughs> almost like it's a law. All right. So all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to just ever so slightly just drag it across the like the top ridge there. Um, there's still a little bit too much paint on this. Okay. Just to give even more like discoloration to the fur. Yeah. So I think actually I'm going to paint his mouth too while we're kind of thinking about it. So silly me, I do need more of that tan skin. You'd think I'd come into this with a better plan other than what models am I going to paint and roughly how I want to paint them. So I know Brad has channel points for um, a random factor joke. Mm -hmm. Would we be, how do, how do you feel about channel points for pick a color? Oh, I could totally do that. <laughs> do you think Heck, it would I introduce could do it right too, now. <laughs> do you think it would introduce too much chaos? No, I'm going to do it right now. What do you mean? <laughs> Oh, I meant I meant giving them the ability to choose a color. Not it would it be too much chaos for you to add it. No, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz I mean audience interactions always fun. And I I know I spend a I know I feel like I spend a lot of these just kind of like explaining my process. Um and that's fine. That's what I want to do. All right. And it's done. Okay. 
Um, oh, Boise. All right. So I feel like I'm going to open myself um, up to uh, some chaos, but... We already have our first redemption from Pony King 75. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Pick a color, any color. Yep. If I don't have it, I can try to make it. And if somebody says puce, I'm signing off. All right. Uh, pink. Okay. I can do pink. Uh, <laughs> All right. So pink. Hmm. Um, I guess I should ask, um, Pony King, boar or bear? That is important. <laughs> bear? Okay, so we're getting a pink bear. All right. Um, <laughs> now I get a little bit of control here. I don't have, I don't actually, I have a pale pink. But I've got, I've got enough magentas and reds. I can probably make a pretty good pink. I mean, heck, this magenta is pretty pink already. Um, all right, so let's play with some colors. Let's come down here to the bottom of my, uh, to the bottom of my. Uh... Actually, you know what? All right, pinks. I'm going to give you a three for one on this. I mean, I've got, I mean, I can make, pink is easy. Pink is easy to make. All right, so we've got a dark magenta. It's going to probably make a good base color. Let's go with regular magenta. Which again, we kind of had that earlier up here. Uh, I didn't use it for anything um, on these animals, but it is just a pretty pink magenta. And then a pale pink. All right. Well, grizzly bear, you uh, you lived most of your life as a nice brown grizzly bear. Um, but the winds of chaos have, have spoken, and you're about to become very pink. So. I'm so the, excited. <laughs> I think in the future, it'll probably be like, hey, I'm about to do a thing. Pick, you know, use it now. But. We gotta go big for the first one, right? Oh my. That is a that is an interesting pink. <laughs> Dark magenta. Uh, and I'm putting it over brown, which will be kind of interesting. Uh so let's see. If you are on your PC, Nix. Uh, you should see like a little treasure chest below the ch uh, below the chat, and you should see a number uh, next to it. It's a little like green treasure chest. Um, if you click the number, you should see a bunch of options to redeem channel points. And you just earn channel points by watching. I didn't actually see what's the um, what's the points redemption for it at. I put it at eight seventy five for more maximum chaos. Ah, perfect. All right. Thought about doing the pink on the boar, but the one that I still have left to paint is pretty much just going to be Pumba. So that's why we offered bear or boar. And I appreciate that you chose bear. All right. This is neon green really brings out the MCC pink in his eyes. All 
I do have kind of a glossy neon green. Please just uh, put the nasty slime, just dot that in his eye holes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And I always repaint the mouth, so I'm not... If I mess it up, I mess it up. Yeah, I should make the bear fluorescent. I might. That's probably what that pale pink... Where that pale pink's gonna come into play. Is the... It'll probably be, like, my final dry brush. This kind of looks like the, uh... The bear crawled out of, uh... The stuff. <laughs> or he was caught in the cotton candy from, uh... Oh, man... Planet Nine from Outer Space? Is that what that was called? The Killer Clowns. Killer Clowns. That's what I'm thinking of. Where they would cocoon okay, you yeah. in cotton candy. <laughs> Honestly? That sounds like a pretty fun way to go. Well, you know, up until everything after being cocooned in the cotton candy. I'd try my best to get, eat my way out. Yeah, I'm like pretty sure the cotton candy was like acid. Oh, man. Yeah, it was, it was deadly cotton candy. Granted, I probably would have still tried to eat it while I was yeah. in there. <laughs> Why not, right? Yeah. Well, I'm going to die right. anyway. Might as well enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Taste this raspberry cotton candy. All right. So he's got to dry a little bit before we move on to the next part of it. Um, I'm trying to think what kind of washes I have available. Got a purple contrast, but I don't think that's really the best way to do it. But I do have, I do have a blue. I've got a blue wash. Uh, all right. So we'll put him back there. I'm going to come back back to our Pumba. Um, let's take some of this burnt orange over here. Just mix that in. Lighten up the burnt orange for our kind of final color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back to the, the realm of plausibly colored animals. At least until the bear dries. So. All right. And then back to the realm of insanity. And it hurts that my friends never stood downwind. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck in my head now. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not surprised after, you know, we made we make one reference to it, you sing it, and then Grape Ape comes in and starts singing it. Yep. <laughs> I am... Oh, no, there it is. I was like, I'm missing a color. Actually, I... I am missing a color. I lost my coal black somewhere. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's over here. I forgot that I was using the white and the uh, the black to kind of show, um, like, saturation differences. All right. Admittedly, Nyx, it has taken a lot of practice with these dry brushes. <laughs> um, when I was painting the that dragon last week, um, my hand was like stained gray um from all of the uh all of the dry brushing i was doing to get the to get everything kind of set up for it i don't think there's a way i can show it off off stream because i left it with my father-in-law we uh we just finished our uh my father-in-law has been running a D, D campaign for the last like six years um and we just uh, finished the campaign last night. Um, and so as a like a gift to him, I wanted to paint the dragon that we knew we were fighting. I do have pictures. I could send them to I could send them over to you real quick. Yep. Uh, I could put them um, I could either put them on the screen now or I could put them in post. Yeah, uh, let me. We finished painting Pumbaa's uh, 
little ridge crest of fur here. Yeah, it's pretty good looking. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit of that tan skin and paint that on his snoot real quick. So I can then just do a little like pink wash on that. Nix, <laughs> he does get downhearted every time that he. Oh, I shouldn't say that in front of the kids. <laughs> so, let's see. Now, Grape Ape has probably seen this because I did post it in the Dungeon Crawler server. But I'm still pretty proud of it. But I will say most of the work was the print. Um, this is a there's a there's a 3D uh, model sculptor out there um, who um, uh, he does a lot of um... hey Pony King if you're if you're here next week um, I will I'll make sure to show off the finished pink bear on stream I'll show it off anyways but <laughs> and you can always catch it in the VOD. Um, but there's a model, there's a 3D sculptor who does um, who does a really, really, really detailed, like, big, bad bosses for role-playing games. And his Elder Black Dragon uh, model is, is the print that I used. Um, and honestly, that did most of the work. So, all right. Um, I'm going to use blue as my wash. Um, maybe I should also pick up a red wash so I could have made a purple, but we're just going to go ahead and this is going to darken the base magenta, but I think it's going to make a nice contrast for when we start hitting it with the brighter pinks, uh, pink colors. You know what I should start doing is once I take, cause I've been taking glamour shots of all of the models that I've been painting for brush hour. And what I should do is I should, I don't know if I should, is it if I send them to you or if I send them to someone else to include with the, um, with what goes up for this week on Twitch um, so that people can see the, uh, the completed stuff from the previous week. Yeah, I'll ask, uh, I'll ask Brett if that's a, if that's something he wants to do. Okay. I'm sure it's, it's probably easy. It, and honestly, if it is much easier for, for him to be like, eh, it's all right. Completely understand. <laughs> Worst case, I'll just use it for the thumbnails. <laughs> all right. So we're going to let this bear dry. Um, but since our boars are pretty much done with their like main coats, uh, I'm going to just start kind of picking out fine details. So like their teeth, their hooves, their claws. Well, boars are pigs. I think hooves, technically. That's what I was thinking. Like, are they still technically hooves? Do they have, is there a special name? Thank you. I think, I mean, that's what we're going for. We're shooting for looks pretty good and looks pretty good on the table. So I'm glad it seems we are accomplishing that. Honestly, these guys do, they look much better off camera. Um, you can see a lot of the different details that are picked up by the dry brushing. Just doesn't quite come through on stream. So I'm just painting the hooves. Um, let's do that for both of them. I already had black on the palette. Silly me. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I don't know how well you can see it, but I think I think WizKids needs to fix their um, boar sculpt because his front left leg is also kind of jacked up. <laughs> There's a 90 degree bend um, on his forearm. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's just, that's how boars walk. I don't know what you're talking about. It's, it, that's, that's totally normal. Okay, all right. <laughs> if you say so. 
He's not he's not an eldritch horror in disguise. <laughs> Worst part is, is these hooves are so tiny that I'm gonna paint the I'm gonna paint the like ground part like a much like lighter brown, and I have a feeling that my paintbrush is just gonna accidentally clip the hooves, and I'll just have to repaint them, which it's fine, not a big deal. Um, let's see, let's wet my brush again. Let's get some of this. Just kind of start. Picking this out because again, we're gonna I'm gonna do probably get a bunch of these together and then we'll do uh probably do a whole night on talking about basing, which is not necessary at all, but can make your stuff look really nice. But this also means because I have a pink bear, I have to go back to my hobby shop and pick up appropriately colored uh flora i got normal colored plants here that won't work but at least it's at least it's my shop's black friday sale so i'll be able to get a couple of nice things they do yeah they do make theirs like magenta flowers um there's a couple of really like neon uh flora that's that you can get for this stuff and it looks it's really really like bright and vibrant um and um it's kind of wild to like see um but it works really well if you're doing anything sort of alien or um otherworldly which I think is a good descriptor for our bear. Besides not trying to hit the hooves, I'm really, really just kind of slapping the paint on here because I'm going to wash it. Um... I might also put some basing material on it so that like, well, actually, no, this is pretty, pretty okay the way it is. Like it's some terrain. Though I might do something to build up the dirt and gravel around it. Go pick up some rocks for my driveway. The bear needs to dry, though. All right. So, I've got kind of a base coat of earthy color onto both of our boars. Um, and still waiting on our bear to dry. Um, so I think at that point, uh, I don't know if you wanted to swap to the images I just sent. Yeah, I can do that. I don't know if you need to take, like, go to, like, take five to set it up or... Nope, already done. Set Perfect. it up while you were painting Pumbaa. So, uh, this is, um, this is the Elder Black Dragon, um, from Lord of the Print. Uh, Lord of the Print, like I said earlier, does really, really cool, um, uh, like, models, um, for, like, big nasties. Um, the dragon that we fought, uh, her name was Sakurg, um, and just like, uh, like old school D&D, there was just one dragon. Um, she, uh, has been, had been harrying, uh, our party for a long time now, um, and so, like I said, as kind of a thank you to my father-in-law for the campaign, uh, I painted up. Uh, you can actually see kind of in the bottom of this picture there, uh, the base didn't print right. Um, there's a little, like, chunk missing. Um, but that's sometimes it's what you get when uh, with resin printing. 
Um, but the the model um, is really cool, really pretty easy to paint. Um, I used basically all of the te techniques that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. Um, I basically, uh, if you were here last week, I started her off with the slap chop method. So I primed her black and then I dry brushed um, gray. Actually, the stone work uh, that she's standing on is basically what I did with the slap chop, but I didn't do anything else to the rocks. Um, so it was just black paint, gray over top of it. And then um, kind of like a dark ivory for the scales and the bone. Um, blues for the wings. And then um, you can see just a little pop of color on the base um, is those pools of green acid. Um, those were done with a with a Vallejo um, game effects or special effects paints. Uh, it was the acid and the bile colors. Um, they dry glossy. Uh, so I basically I painted the green down, waited till it was mostly dry, and then hit it with the brighter neon green. Um, and then um, I used little tufts of grass that I glued on uh, to add some shrubbery uh, in, uh, to the base. So it wasn't just desolate rock. Um, but yeah, um, she was the, uh, she was our, uh, the sort of final boss of the campaign that we, um, that we just finished up and our bear still isn't dry. Um, that's okay. Uh, he's mostly dry. Um, so I'm going to go back to our, back to our boars. Um, I'm going to kind of start picking out their teeth. So uh, I'm actually going to use, uh, where'd my brush go? There it is. Um, I'm going to use the pale pink, actually, that we're going to be using later uh, to just sort of pick out the tusks. Um, you can use ivory, bone, skeletal bone. Um, I'm just using a pale pink because it's out here. Uh, but essentially, I'm just like, just put a little bit of detail on here. I'm going to hit the front teeth there. Just a little bit of color there. And then we'll go do the same here. Just to pick this out, just a little pop of the color. Um, since I'm probably going to end up putting a bit of a wash down in this area anyways, uh, I don't, I'm not too concerned if it's a little bit too bright because it'll, it'll get dulled um, by the paint drying and by any sort of wash that I use. Um, let's see. I can also do... I'm going to use the warm brown here, and we're going to... Try to get a little bit of color on that eye. Not going for anything fancy, just a little dot of color. Um, On the darker bore, it probably won't matter too much. Um, <laughs> uh, but on this one, on Pumba, it probably will. Actually, you know what? I should see what color eyes Pumba has. Okay, he's got. I thought he. I don't know why I thought he had blue eyes. He's got kind of yellowy eyes with a little black dot in the center. So let's go. Got a little, little bit of yellow there. So when that dries, I'm going to hit it with just a little like pinprick of black to give it a pupil. Um, the other one's fine with the actually, you can even tell. So you know what? 
We do the same thing. We'll give him a little bit of yellow eye too. Guess it wasn't dry all the way. So it immediately just mixed in with the color. It actually looks much better with a little a little bright pop. All right, so Bear, are you dry yet? You're not dry yet. Man, that magenta doesn't want to dry. <laughs> the magenta's dry. It's just that blue wash that I put on it. You can mm. still see it's like oh, yeah. it's kind of down under his butt. Um that's uh still a little wet. All right. Um I don't I don't really have a red red wash. But I do have a contrast paint. Contrast paint will work just as well. Just gonna get just ever so slightly, and I'm just going to just get it onto the tongue, just to give it a little color in the mouth. I'm hitting the teeth a little bit, but that's okay. I can just like wipe that away with my finger, or I can quickly like wipe off my brush and dilute it a little bit. It'll still add. There'll still be a little color there. That's okay. These are ravenous pigs. Pumba, no. He finally got tired of uh, of eating bugs. They were no longer slimy yet satisfying. <laughs> they were just slimy. All right. So I think we're at a point with the bear that I can start dry brushing parts of him. Um, there's still like crevices where it's um, still a little wet, but we'll be here all night. And, and I don't think we I don't think we want that to really happen. So we're just going to go ahead. Oop, too much on that still. No, he's just got a little white socks. <laughs> and there's a lot of pink still on that. It'll be like a tuxedo cat. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. You can definitely tell the uh, dry brushing on mm -hmm. the magenta. Holy yeah. cow. You know, this is scarier than a grizzly bear. <laughs> I would I don't know what I'd do if I saw a bear that looked like this coming at me. Right? Alright, so I think that's gonna I'm probably gonna play some more with his base color off stream. Um like for, for what the for the ground that the bear is standing on. But I think what we're looking for now is we're going to um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do that pale pink. 
do a little bit more on the brush. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what I'm statting up uh, tomorrow. Uh, this seems like something that would come out of uh, like a cotton candy grizzly bear would sounds like something that would come out of uh, the technomancer. Mm hmm. That's exactly what I was thinking. All right. So I'm just going to do this right, whoop, right at the, kind of the top. That's still way too much paint on the brush. But we're just going to like just sort of do it very lightly at the top of the bear. And on his belly. And a little bit on his back. Now he kind of looks like he's covered in sugar crystals. <laughs> it does, just a little bit. All right. That might just be the way the camera's picking it up, though. No, he, I mean, he kind of, whoops. We're going to go BRB. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry about that, everyone. Little, little technical difficulties. Um, we uh, failed our luck check um, with the uh, internet service providers, fickle patrons as they are. Um, so what I'm going to, what I'm doing now is I'm going to use, um, that kind of disgusting slime uh, color that we used last week, kind of unsuccessfully, um, <laughs> to kind of create sort of like mold lines on that chair uh, for the dead warlord. And this time we're going to use it to uh, give a kind of a gross neon eye color to the bear. Whoops, and I'm not on camera. I think we found the perfect reason to use this effect. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Um, get a little bit more in that left eye. Oh, that's grody. It's so uh, it's wonderful. Um, you know what a you know what a, a toxic pink bear needs for its tongue color? Green. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm um, glad we're on the same page because I'm like, <laughs> I swear if he's pulling out some weird color, I don't know what's gonna no, happen. I don't I don't think I think the like the disgusting slime is kind of like the weird the weirdest color that I have. Um besides maybe like this athermatic blue. Um but otherwise it's a lot of mostly normal colors. Um so right now the tongue is kind of a pinkish purple. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and I've got some, the same acid paint that I used, um, that I used on those acid pools on that dragon. All right, so we have some technical difficulties with that. Um, that's not going to work. Because it's too thin. It's not opaque enough. Uh, so... We're going to come in here with pale pink. And that should give us a nice kind of opaque base for the green. And then let's see, we'll go ahead. So let that go. All right. Well, that's drying, which shouldn't take too long. I'm going to take um, a little bit of that pale pink and a little bit of white. And what I'm going to do with the with that is like kind of line the eyes to sort of make them glowy a little bit. So like the eyes are going to be that green, but we're going to outline it with a very bright color. Like, so it's just going to be uh, 
It's going to be basically just white, and I'm going to kind of almost dry brush it. I'm just going to make sure that there's very little paint on my brush. Um, all right, there we go. And then I'm just going to go to the eyes. You're off screen. Just, whoop. There we go. Just trying to get to the edge of the eyes just to really kind of create a sort of bright point. And you can do this with dry brushing, but I don't feel confident enough that I wouldn't hit the uh, the green. So I'm just going to kind of make sure that I'm just being getting around the eye with that. Actually, you know what? Let's see what happens if I put a little bit of the green in there. Oh, yeah, that's actually perfect. So, again, very, very little amount of paint on my brush. I'm just going to go kind of just almost dab it in. Just to create some effect. Oof. Yeah. Doesn't look great on cam. It looks all right in real life, but I think the effect comes across. And then if I really want to, I can just go back in with another bit of the green. Uh, just kind of dab it in, give it another like layer essentially. To really just kind of brighten it back up again. All right, so now that that color or the mouth should be dry at this point, so we're going to go ahead and just sort of paint that gross green acid color. And it looks like I might need to do two layers. Yeah, he's going to tear you limb from limb. He is. Um, but he is going to smell like um, watermelon Jolly Ranchers as he does so. I was sitting here thinking, this is a cotton candy bear with uh, with a sour punch straw for a tongue. <laughs> <laughs> a possessed Scooby-Doo bear. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that worked. That came out really well. I was a little <laughs> worried when pink was chosen, but I think we got there in the end. This is amazing. It is. All right. Um... Our, our, our normal looking boars looking fantastic. Our bear. Um, oh man, I have to make the rocks candy now too. I mean, okay, yes, but I'm going to do that off stream. <laughs> this is the perfect, I was just thinking, this is the perfect time of the year to go to like a hobby shop. And you mm -hmm. know how they have those uh, like miniature train town things yeah. they always have like gumdrop little miniatures to go around you could get some of those <laughs> well i wasn't going to stop by the nearest michaels but now i think i have to <laughs> I, I mean it's an idea it, no it's a good idea it's a great idea um yeah man or Small Town Vices has an even cheaper op option. Just go get a package of Pop Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the one worry, I, I mean, obviously I'd play with it, but my one worry would be I would use, like, watered down Elmer's glue um, <sighs> to seal it. And so my worry is, is, does the glue by itself activate the Pop Rocks? Or... <laughs> does the watered-down Elmer's glue activate the Pop Rocks? 
That would be something to test because it'd yeah. be, it would it would dissolve and then you'd just have a, a goopy mess of melted pop rocks. The, but <laughs> the other idea would be, I think this is the biggest one I've got, is I've got this. So this is what I normally use for like basing materials is um, this Gale Force 9 scenic stuff, but you can buy like. The woodland scenics is what you would see for like, um, uh, like hobby uh, model trains, um, yeah, aqua or aquarium stones. But I could probably like take this and, um, glue this to the base, uh, like I would do for normal basing. Um, seal it with uh some white primer, and then um. I could use the uh, I could use the acid effect paint. Um, I can use the blood paint. Um, I could probably mix like a gloss varnish with like blue, um, and create um, uh, create like candy stones essentially. So, but that's that's basically. I mean, that's something. I got a week to think about that. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so I'm actually very excited about this bear. The best use of channel points I've seen in a while. Yeah, who would have guessed? <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Uh, so it is um, almost 11 p.m. my time. Um, so let's just kind of like take a look at our work tonight. Um, most of this was accomplished with, with dry brushing. The idea tonight was to like highlight fur textures, how you can paint fur. Um, you can do this with animal miniatures. You can do this with like fur on like a, like a ranger. Um, so this is a pre-painted mini, but you can see they've got like a fur cloak. Um, you can do the same thing, uh, on their cloak to get this, get very similar effects. Fur is a really good texture to show up um, a lot of like a lot of paint techniques real easily. Um, essentially, we did a base coat, uh, a, a wash to shade it, and then the dry brush to highlight it again. Um, and, you know, basing aside, I've got three more minis I can now put on the table. Um, so uh, with that. um. What am I painting next time? Um, well, I had... So where did it go? So because I opened them, um, I had those skeleton, or the scarecrow. Um, so we've got... Yeah, we'll see. Um, I think I'm going to continue our animal trend. Uh, and except this time we are going to go a little bit more mystical. Um, I am going to be painting the, uh, unicorn from, uh, again, these are, uh, these are WizKids minis, um, but these are from, again, from the Deep Cuts line, and we are going to play around with, um, obviously some more dry brushing, because these unicorns have some nice hair on the mane and tails, and even, uh, above their hooves, um, and I think we're going to play with, uh, with like painting like light pastel colors. We've been doing a lot of like real dark colors, um, psycho bear aside. Uh, but the, um, I think these unicorns are going to take to some really nice, like nice pastels. So you should be able to, um, if you'd like to paint along, um, you should be able to find these, uh, for, um, or at any sort of hobby shop. Um, that sells role playing games. Um, so your your nearest Goodman Games distributor. Um, they I, I I'm hiding the price tags, but basically they're five bucks. They they're not very expensive. Um, and um, yeah, if you want to go pick these up, especially with um, this week being Thanksgiving here in the states, a lot of your local game stores may be doing something for. Uh, Thanksgiving for Black Friday sales. Um, support your local shops. Uh, if they don't exist, we can't 
play our games there. So um, support them where you can. Obviously, if they're a bunch of jerks, don't support them. But if you've got a friendly, if you've got a good friendly local gaming store, support them. And then, you know, maybe get them to pick up some Goodman Games products. Uh, DCC, you know, MCC, where you might be able to play with your brand new Psycho Bear. Uh, <laughs> um, with that, uh, I will see you all next week. Um, and I hope you all have a good Thanksgiving and a good rest of your week. Bye. <laughs>